Will the Honourable Member Ian Lees Galloway. Well, Mr Speaker, David Bennett isn't often right, but he's wrong again. He's completely got the wrong end of the stick, doesn't understand Labour policy, probably doesn't understand national policy, and certainly doesn't understand tax policy uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So let's talk about a capital gains tax, and let's talk about why the National Party hates the idea of a capital gains tax. First of all, David Bennett says this is a capital gains tax on the productive sector. It's a pity that David Bennett isn't uh, paying close attention to what I have to say, sir. It's a pity that David Bennett gets up in the House, uh, makes inaccurate accusations, shows his lack of intelligence, shows his lack of understanding, shows his absolute ignorance, and then can't uh, pay attention to the Speaker uh, who responds to what he has to say, sir. A capital gains tax. This is, this is what a capital gains tax would do. It would encourage investment in the productive sector the job-creating sector and discourage uh, investment in the speculation in property, because that is one of New Zealand's biggest problems. And it is something that this national government has failed to address. And that is the fact that far too much capital in New Zealand is tied up in the unproductive speculation in residential property. Now, it's true that Labor does not want to apply a capital gains tax to the family home because that is not speculation in the property market. That is putting a roof over your family's head. And the vast majority of nations in the OECD have a capital gains tax, and most of those do not apply it to the family home. This is absolutely normal, run-of-the-mill, international best practice approach to taxation. But that party over there, the National Party, they hate the idea of a capital gains tax. I wonder why that is. I wonder why that is. The first reason, sir, is that so many of them and the people that uh, keep them in government, the people that ensure the National Party has the resources to run campaigns, rely on capital gain for tax-free income. They rely on, 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 on investment and speculation, speculation in the non-productive residential property sector to make their money. And they don't like the idea that a government will come along and say to them, hey, the way you make your money ought to be taxed just in the same way that the way everybody else makes their money. Why is it that a person can go to work for 40 hours a week, maybe 50 hours a week, maybe 60 hours a week and earn wages to put food on the table, to put a roof over their children's heads and pay tax on every cent they earn? Yet the National Party's property speculators don't pay tax on their capital gains. That might be one reason why the National Party doesn't like capital gains, but I think there's another reason, because speculators are the people who do best out of capital gains and the tax-free income it generates. And who are the lackeys of the speculators? It's the traders. It's the share traders and the money traders, because speculators are short-term investors. They put their money here, they wait for the price to go up, they pull their money out, they put their money somewhere else, they wait for the price to go up, they, they pull their money out. And every time they put their money in and they take their money out, that's a transaction. That's a transaction that a trader carries out, and the trader clips the ticket along the way. Who's the biggest trader in New Zealand? Why, it's our Prime Minister, John Key. So this is just a classic case of John Key looking after his old buddies, right. his mates in the, in the trading sector, the money traders, the used money salesmen who want to clip the ticket every time a speculator makes a transaction. Those are the people who are opposed to a capital gains tax. The real investor, the value investor who puts their money into a business long term, wants to see that business grow, wants to see that business create jobs and contribute to our nation's GDP, they're not funding the traders. They're not worried about the capital gains tax because they're worried about building a good business that's going to pay them a dividend, a dividend that they already pay tax on. No. 
a capital gains tax is only opposed by those who have no interest in building our nation. It is opposed by those with vested interests, those who support the speculators and those who want to put their private wealth, their private benefit ahead of the interests of the nation. So tax tends to be something where the left and the right do disagree. And, and there's good reasons for that, because over here on the left, we want a fair tax system where everybody gets to pay their fair share. Over there, they want to make sure that the people reliant on salary and wages, particularly the people who are on modest incomes, pay more than their fair share, and the people at the top uh, get a sweet deal. We saw it, of course, when back in 2010, national cut tax rates for the top 10 per cent, whilst at the same time putting GST up, that regressive tax that, that may, meant that people buying food, buying clothes for the kids, paying the school fees, had to pay more tax to make up for the shortfall uh, from decreasing the tax on the people at the top. Now, Bill English, Bill English late last year tried to defend these changes by saying that the tax system is more progressive now since those 2010 changes. He said households earning less than $60,000 a year, which total around half of all households, are generally expected to pay less in percentage terms than they were in 2008 and 2009. Conversely, those at the top are expected to pay more. That just tells me one thing, sir. That is that inequality is growing in New Zealand. Those at the top are earning more and mercifully are, it would seem, paying a little bit more tax. And those at the bottom are earning less and therefore paying less of the overall taxation. But is it fair? Is it fair? That's the question we have to ask. Well, look, a fair measure a measure of whether or not taxation is fair is simply this. If the top 10%, say, control 50% of the wealth, they should be paying 50% of the tax. And those who control, say, 5% of the wealth should be paying about 5% of the tax. Well, here's, here's what Bill English said. Here's what Bill English said the words of the finance minister himself. He said the top 12%, not just the top 10%, but the top 12% pay around 46% of taxation. So they are paying less than their fair share under national. Meanwhile, those earning less than 60000 a year, which make up around half of New Zealanders, i.e. those who pay, who, who control about 5% of the wealth in New Zealand, they are paying 11% of income tax. So those earning the least, who have the least wealth, are paying about twice as much tax as is fair, whilst those at the top get the sweetheart deals from this government, not only in income tax, but also through the benefit of tax-free capital gains that that party over there refuses to budge on. Sir, it is clear. It is plain, and it is in the words of the finance minister himself, our tax system is unfair, and New Zealand is growing more unequal and has become more unequal over the last five years. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to my colleagues in the Labour Party or our, uh, our friends on the left of politics. You just have to listen to the Finance Minister, Bill English, his own words say it for themselves. New Zealand is more unequal and New Zealanders on moderate and low incomes have a higher tax burden than what is fair. In fact, they're paying twice as much tax as they ought to. So, sir, we think we can do it differently. We think this bill should have been used to implement a progressive growth-focused taxation system. But that's not here. That's not here because that party over there isn't interested in growth. 
It isn't interested in supporting innovative businesses that create jobs and contribute to our nation's GDP. They are interested in doing deals that support their mates. They are interested in maintaining the status quo because that is in the best interest of their mates. They are not interested in growing our economy. They are not interested in creating jobs. And, sir, that is why they will be out on their ears by the end of this year. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. The aye. party vote call for. Ms Delahunty has asked for a party vote. In that case, we will have one. <laughs> New Zealand National. 59 in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 in favour. New Zealand First. 7 votes in favour. Māori Party. Two in favour. Mana. One opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Horan. One in favour. Any other votes? Thank you. <coughs> Honourable members, the ayes are 119, the noes are 1. The motion is agreed to. Thank you. Taxation, annual rates, foreign superannuation and remedial matters bill, third reading. With that handled or we'll moved out of the way, I therefore call on Government Order of the Day number two. Border processing, trade single window and duties bill, second reading. Mr Speaker. I recognise the Honourable Minister. Morris Williamson. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm